everyone, and welcome to our session at the Arm Dev Summit. My name is David Sawyer, co-founder and chief product officer at DeepLight. Today, we're very excited to share with you our talk on how we've combined software optimizations with the optimized hardware from Arm to create faster inference for convolutional neural networks on NPUs. We're going to talk about how these two worlds join forces and enable developers to create faster, more efficient models on the new hardware endpoints that are emerging. And let's dive in. So to set the scene, a uh, brief background on you know, where we're coming from at Deployed as a software company, and of course, the specialized hardware that's being introduced from ARM. We're going to talk about the gaps that exist here. And at the same time, we have more possibilities and options than ever for tools and solutions as developers, but you know, more complexities than ever on how to actually implement them in production. So to address this gap, particularly for how do we do inferencing at the edge, we've looked at the Deployed Neutrino software, which is an automated way of optimizing your models from the software perspective and how applicable these optimizations are to the ARM Ethos U55 and U65 NPU. We'll go through different types of optimizations, ones that account for the hardware platform, ones that can be run independent of the hardware platform, and then we're gonna dive into the results we got, which I think is really exciting here. That's really where the rubber meets the road, and we're gonna explore how we've created new possibilities for inferencing on new hardware. And the motivation from there is what's coming next. How can we take this even further in terms of running more complex workloads? And what are the solutions we need to create to create the next generation of workloads? So looking at things very quickly from, from a background perspective, DeepLight is a, is a Montreal-based startup uh, with offices in Toronto as well. We are looking at how to make AI more accessible and affordable across a broad range of devices. We're very proud to be an ARMAI ecosystem partner and also a tiny and you know, strategic partner. And today we're going to talk about how we've used our Neutrino software, which is our flagship product that helps AI developers automate and reduce the complexities around compressing and speeding up their neural networks. And in particular, we're going to look at the hardware side of the equation, which is, of course, the Ethos U55, U65 NPU, share our experience with some of the tools we use to create the models, to optimize the models to deploy on that hardware. And of course, towards the end of the talk, we're going to get into the results we got on this platform. So looking at the context from, from a high level, um, you know, we're coming into this, what started as initially an idea early this year around, you know, we're optimizing neural networks for a variety of platforms. And ARM has a very exciting uh, hardware coming up, uh, which should be mentioned as the NPU. And the idea was very simply, how, if at all, can we use these model optimizations that already exist, this hardware that's about to come into the, into the, into the fray, to really join forces here and create the most efficient and most performance solutions possible. And in particular, what are, the, what are the gaps we need to look at as we try to go from the left-hand side of this equation to the right-hand side? Now, fortunately, since we started this problem you know, earlier in 2021, there's been a lot of work both from both sides around how can we reduce the friction, how can we create more um, accessible tooling to make this happen. And to make the problem a little more complex for those of us who, who run neural networks at the edge, we're going to start from a PyTorch neural network. So this is really cool because we get to go through some of the framework compatibilities and how can we still you know, be, be effective in bringing these models to uh, novel hardware. And in particular, we're gonna look at where are the bottlenecks, where are the benefits, and how much performance can we really gain here? So to make all this a reality, we have three tools at play. Besides the hardware, we're gonna look at this software optimization. So starting here, we wanna start from an initial train network, something we're familiar with, like MobileNet V1. And the concept here is taking this baseline model how much performance can we get purely from optimizing the model on the same hardware? It's really a before and after scenario here. And making things a little more complicated, we only allowed ourselves less than 1% trade-off in accuracy. So very stringent here. We're talking about real-world deployment. Once we've optimized the model, we then want to use the tooling from ARM to see how much performance we get, how the model's performing you know, in, in cycle approximate matters, and then also how in cycle accurate can we get in terms of you know, really estimating the performance. So we looked at a couple of different tools for this. We were very excited to have a preview of the Corsair 300 FTP. That was really useful in terms of getting some experience around the hardware capabilities. We'll talk about that more in just a second. And of course, one of our favorite aspects of this was actually using the Vela compiler, which was you know, very simple, very straightforward. We were able to get some interesting metrics that motivated us to actually go even further and test these results on FPGA. So this was done in collaboration with the ARM ML team, and we're very excited to, to go a little bit deeper here now. By objective metrics, what we mean here is that how can we reduce the size of the model in terms of parameters, operations, and footprint that may lead to benefits on the hardware without knowing any specific aspects of the hardware and not customizing these optimizations to that hardware. This is important here because we don't want to have to you know, reinvent the wheel every time we want to optimize a model. And more importantly, we're in pursuit of generally applicable techniques any developer can pick up and start applying right away. 
So in this context, we use the Deep Light Neutrino software to optimize the model, as you can see here. So in this case, we run what's called our uh, automated design space exploration. And what's happening here to get a little bit under the hood is an approximation of a much larger neural network with a series of thinner and deeper smaller neural networks. The exciting thing here is that, uh, you know, purely from a model perspective or the model content perspective, we can deliver some pretty drastic performance gains, in some cases even as much as 100x compression without any quantization. So using these off-the-shelf optimizations, the idea was how applicable is it to the Ethos U55? What we'll see here is that we take this optimized model that comes out of the neutrino process we just showed and run it through this FVP. The FVP was something that took a bit of time to, to really get, get familiar with. And fortunately, we found that if you can stitch a lot of the components together and use it as a virtual machine, the tool is incredibly effective at, at, at speeding up your prototyping time. At the same time, we were able to realize the differences between the Ethos U MPU and the affiliated uh, M55 CPU and really see, okay, how can we intelligently offload different parts of the network, different parts of the hardware to realize the most performance gains? This is what we mean by with knowledge of the hardware. These tools come from ARM. They're incredibly effective for ARM hardware. And our job was to realize how can we use them to take the optimizations we already have and deliver some benefit to the hardware and really to the user at the end of the day. A couple of takeaways we had from this process were, as you mentioned, using a VM or using some kind of uh, you know, Docker image to, to compartmentalize all the tools or rather aggregate them uh, really helps speed up development time. Uh, secondly, using the Velo compiler is incredibly simple, incredibly effective, and has really nice reporting in terms of the metrics you want to see, cycle count, uh, latency, et cetera. That's a really introspective tool in terms of uh, the performance we're getting from the hardware. And we also found that, um, I think as anyone who, who's, who's looked at conversions between frameworks knows, we need a better way to convert between Onyx to PyTorch, Onyx to TensorFlow, and really bridge those gaps we talked about earlier. And fortunately, as a result of, of this testing, we actually ended up you know, pulling up our, our sleeves and, and building an Onyx to TF converter ourselves. So that's something we were excited to share with you guys towards the end as well. But overall, this was effective in getting some initial estimates that indicated you know, in simulation that maybe we had uh, something meaningful here in terms of optimization performance. So to dive in, we actually ended up testing with the ARM team on FPGA to get really, really accurate metrics uh, between the initial model, which is you know, a vanilla mobile net v1 and an optimized mobile net v1 that really tried to squeeze out as much performance as possible. Now, naively, we didn't incorporate any customizations around the ethos U because again, we want this to be as off the shelf, as accessible as possible to as wide of an audience as possible. So without further ado, after setting up this test configuration environment and running our models, we observed some interesting things. First of all, it seems you really don't need to overly incorporate uh, hardware intrinsics into your model optimization to get some benefits. And by some benefits, you mean almost as much as double your inference performance. So in this case, we achieved 70% less cycles, meaning that we can actually move the model a lot faster, uh, which of course will have a benefit in, in our latency and throughput side as well. Also power savings, memory savings, uh, which we'll get to uh, you know, in, in a second in terms of, well, what else can we do with all this extra uh, bandwidth? And using this raw data from the FPGA, we're able to find that we had a 70% improvement in throughput. This is super exciting. Essentially adding about a thousand extra inferences a second just from the optimized model, working with the optimized compiler, running on the accelerator. This is of course using a relatively simple use case, but at the same time, the results speak for themselves. There's a lot of juice to squeeze in terms of model compression and optimized hardware. And the two are definitely friendly together. That's one of the best and most exciting things here. So all this data, all this, all this uh, you know, excitement, what's next? Well, as we speak, we've actually already graduated from simple you know, uh, classification tasks like, like uh, visual wake words and are already looking at more complex models such as uh, ResNet, uh, SSD, and even YOLO models to try and fit onto these constrained hardware. In this case, it's not just about faster, it's also about smaller, and squeezing some relatively simple intelligence along with some more complex intelligence onto a configurable board like the NPU is really gonna create some new use cases across smart cameras, home security, speakers, and much more. Again, coming back to that metric, 70% more inferences a second by simply combining optimizations we already have from software with hardware. That's really the takeaway here. So thank you very much for attending our session, everyone. As a thank you, we'd love to invite you to actually access Neutrino and start testing for yourselves on the Ethos U or any ARM, ARM hardware. It's certainly relevant. And as an extra thank you for attending our session, we'd like to invite you to test our Deep Light Runtime, 
This is for the Cortex A CPUs that we're probably all familiar with. It definitely complements the ecosystem as, as from the developer perspective, and we can't wait to get you uh, trying it. So enjoy this. Thank you very much.